gosh, I love this thing. Well, folks, it is my honor and privilege to announce that I'm releasing a library today with Piano Book Artists. If you find that you want to go pick it up, or if you just want to check out the details while I'm yapping, uh, Piano Book's website is the place to be. This is a pretty involved library. It's my most ambitious to date by a long shot. So uh, I'm just going to jump right into describing what in the hell it is. This is Hearth and Hollow, the Plucked Folk Ensemble. It's an arrangeable ensemble of seven instruments. If you've been keeping up with what I'm getting up to on a piano book, you probably know about the Wild Mother's Dulcimer, and a lot of folks seem to dig it. Thank you for that, by the way. You can think of this as sort of a big old family reunion for that dulcimer. Uh, I want to take about two minutes here to talk about why this instrumental family reunion is so special and sort of the spirit of the creation of this library. That's It's really important to me. Um, but I refuse to waste any more of your time if you're here explicitly for an instrument walkthrough. So if that's the case and you want to cut right to the bone of this thing, um, go ahead and skip to the uh, timestamp that I'll link up here for you. So what I felt was so special about the dulcimer, which is now true of the six other instruments in Hearth and Hollow, is that it was recorded as if it was meant to end up on an indie folk record. Most of us that use sample libraries are pretty well steeped in the world of media composing, and for a long while, sample libraries were really only built to meet that end. They were tools for TV and for movies. I think that has long since changed. When I think about music that's tacit to events in my life that really made me hard decisions and autumn drives in the Appalachian Mountains, and good conversations on a front porch in June, and, you know, Alan Silvestri doesn't come to mind, and, like, Thomas Newman doesn't come to mind. It's more to the tune of, like, Andrew Bird, and Leonard Cohen, Bonnie Vare, Joni Mitchell, Valley Maker, Adrian Lenker. I mean, these people are composers. Hearth and Hollow was born of this line of thinking. You know, these are important stories to tell, and I don't think a lot of libraries quite like this exist, mostly because the words composer and singer-songwriter uh, have this sort of, like, false mutual exclusivity. But composing is really just the through line, and then singer-songwriter is just a descriptor for the means by which you've decided to kind of let your heart out. And again, now with libraries being a little bit demystified and egalitarian, they're being used by everyone who wants to create music. The types of libraries that are being made should start to try to represent all corners of storytelling, not just for film. So I really tried to reflect that belief in the making of Hearth and Hollow. So when you open Hearth and Hollow, this is what you see. Seven instruments uh, sitting around a room, uh, and off to the side are your options for how to arrange them. Uh, each instrument's articulations can be viewed and changed uh, by clicking the label beneath the instrument's name here. And each instrument's position in the mix can also be adjusted via traditional volume and pan knobs, um, and as well as, I think more usefully, moving the instrument around the space. Uh, you can see at the bottom on the key range uh, a bit of color coding. This burnt reddish orange is the guitar and the cello. The lighter orange is the oud and the banjo, and the yellow is the mandolin and the violin. The dulcimer spreads the entire key range, and when you begin to disengage instruments, you begin to see some green poking through, ultimately showing you where the dulcimer is. I think the fastest way to start exploring this lattice work of instruments is by working with broader swaths on the presets page. The presets page has two lists of presets, the mixes presets, the position of the instruments in the room, as well as how much bleed and room you're hearing. I'm going to save talking about the bleed knob there at the bottom for the end. I think it's my favorite part of the library. The uh, articulations presets are for quickly setting all the instruments to like a particular articulation layout. Um, that's a mouthful. The library right out of the box starts with the assigned seats mix preset and the brush pluck combo articulation preset. Uh, I think that gets right to the heart of this library. Let me show you what I mean. And then if we set that to all brushed. The brush stuff, I think, is really a secret weapon. It has these delicate and uneven transients, especially at really low velocity layers. Uh, the trems, controlled with the mod wheel, uh, very lively and bustling.
Okay, on to note blossoms. I am really pleased with these. Uh, we all know about swarms, but what if it was just a couple of honeybees going from flower to flower? And that's kind of what's going on here. Small, really evocative ideas with tons of space in between. Yeah, you could let that go forever. Uh, these samples that you're hearing are sometimes two minutes long, um, and by default the sample is starting randomly anywhere within that two minutes every time you press a key. This can be toggled off if you're into having the performance of the note blossom hit the same way at a part of a song each time. Holding the sustain pedal while playing a really widely voiced chord with the blossoms is also a really good way to demo some of the mix presets. Fun little feature here, you can also click the labels for either the mixes or the articulations to randomize their layout. Okay, let's talk about the grooves. We'll go with the groove combo, and then we'll actually head back over to the arrange page to see how this is set up. The instruments are playing one of two groove variants. So if we tell the cello, the banjo, the mandolin and the dulcimer to take a hike, we're left with instruments that are just playing groove one. Where groove two utilizes octaves for a sort of broad, gleaming pulse, groove one has more of a traveling jaunt to it. Uh, if we go a step further in our isolation here and just listen to the guitar and then the oud, we'll hear that the guitar's version of Groove 1 is slightly different than the oud's version of Groove 1. So this discrepancy is true of uh, each instrument's version of the grooves. Uh, this was done purposefully. Uh, I can't even tell you how much life this breathes into it. Not to mention the fact that changing the start time of each note is really where your bread and butter is. Like that's where the most bang for your buck is gonna be. Let me show you how deep this rabbit hole goes. Most instruments have grooves one and two, eighth notes and triplets, the exceptions being dulcimer, cello, and violin. In lieu of the eighth note and triplet loops, it's got quarter notes. But one more but very crucial thing about the rhythms. I'm generally kind of let down by pre-recorded loops, so I tried to make these as organic and musical as I could. Uh, take a listen to this. So each groove was played with a soft and laid back approach, often muted, and a higher intensity approach, which projects more and also complicates the rhythm just slightly. Let's set everything back to default here and head under the hood to the adjust page. We've got three knobs. The first controls the volume of randomly triggered instrument noises. These are string squeaks and hands moving across the body of the instrument. I adore these. They show up just enough to add a lot of realism, but not enough to totally drive you mad. Uh, the releases knob, that's your volume for release triggers for the plucked brush and tremolo patches. Again, this is where your realism lives, especially if you're doing notes with shorter sustain. And then finally down here, we have the uh, random start toggle for the blossoms. I mentioned earlier that you can opt in and out of having the notes start at a random location. That's where you do that. At long last, the bleed knob. Gosh, I love this thing. For one, I got to make a really fun animation for when you turn it. This is something I've always wanted in a library. Uh, this knob controls how much of the room you hear, but not in the way that a mic position slider would. It's not something that you mix in with the dry signal, but it's something that bleeds in more and more the further the instrument is away from the microphone.
I think it's really magical. And it also just helps my audio engineering brain not stray too far away from the intuitive and creative side of the mixing and writing process. I also just really like the sound. It's pretty subtle, warm, woody. I mean, it's borderline almost boxy. I've got a soft spot in my heart for unassuming uh, room sounds, like the sound of an old home. The room that I recorded in happens to be fairly old. Uh, this place was built in the late 40s, and the hardwood floor is original. Man, the reflections coming off of those uh, has some wisdom in it. And again, uh, this is all a part of my intent to keep the spirit of indie folk alive in this library. Uh, the ability to glue the sound of a bunch of instruments together with the turn of a knob, I mean, it's flat out cool, but it's also... It pays dividends when you're trying to make music that sounds like a bunch of people sitting around playing together. There is one more little secret about the bleed knob. Depending on which side of the room you put the instrument, uh, front or back respectively, I guess top or bottom, the room sound you're hearing is going to be a little bit different. Hearth and Hollow also comes with solo patches for each of the instruments, and they function very much the same as the ensemble patch. They have a slightly extended range, most notably for the plucked and brushed articulations. The articulations themselves are key switchable, so if you're looking for more of a performance-ready patch, uh, this might be it. But I want to be very clear in saying that this library was built as an interwoven ensemble. I specifically captured the lower and more mellow ranges and mapped all of these instruments out to be used together. So yeah, you're really going to get the most out of it, I think, if you use it as an ensemble with the sort of the arranger headspace. And last but not least, there is a fun little bonus patch of instrument body percussion too. Thank you again to all the folks over at Spitfire and Piano Book that helped support me in making this instrument. Really had to dig in and accept that I wasn't going to have even a glimpse of free time for the better part of like five months, but man. Having such a cool team to work with and an even cooler community to share this with just made the light of the tunnel ever bright. Speaking of community, there is, as always, a free version of this library over on Piano Book, and I have really no intention of slowing down the free releases. I've actually got a couple that I'm like really thrilled about that are coming up. Alrighty, folks, I think that's just about it for me. Uh, Hearth and Hollow, the Plucked Folk Ensemble, is available and on sale now for the next little bit over on Piano Book's website uh, for 79 bucks. If you can, go pick that up and uh, start telling your own stories with it. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>